All right. Uh, I'd like to call on Councilmember Patterson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. At this time, I'd like to move adoption excuse of the me, consent Mr. agenda. Chair, you, I'm, excuse me, but you need to have the public hearing. Oh, oh okay. Thank you. Um, the three ordinances that we are dealing with on this afternoon have uh, just been read. Now we're going to, because they're ordinance, we're going to open up the floor to public input. Are there folks that would like to speak on the three ordinances on our agenda? Uh, thank you. Um, Mia Jacobson, Sam Bellamio, and Alex Zimmerman have signed up to speak, and we're going to ask that you all speak uh, to the ordinances. And if your comments are not relevant or germane to these ordinances, we're going to ask for you to sit. Thank you. Start with Mia. Okay. So earlier, I just oh. wanted. Mr. Fuller, you ought to order. You can't just walk around and talk to councilmen. You, you either have to sit down or you have to sit down or leave the chambers. Go ahead. It's just really frustrating that other people are allowed to walk around, but he's not. I just wanted to point that out, that there are other people walking. So, and earlier when I spoke out about him, this mayor addressing an ordinance, um, if you recall the the uh, process which you legislated requires open public comment to not be relevant to any ordinance that already has a public hearing. So I was actually asking you to follow your own process. So just to make that clear um, for the future. So the um, ordinance that I wish to address is Ordinance 8, um, authorizing elected officials to solicit and receive public office fund contributions which you know isn't very descriptive, but I opened this packet and understood that the differences between the current proposal and the Seattle City Code is that the City Ethics Code prohibits elected officials from accepting contributions from entities with business before the city. And this proposed ordinances would create an exemption in the King County Ethics as to allow entities with business before the county to contribute to office funds. And I just, you know, unfortunately, I wasn't able to speak in this committee. People, common people are never allowed to speak in the committee. And I have one question for you guys. How is that not making blatant bribery completely legal? If you allow um, entities who have business before you, um, how can they not bribe you with office contributions? Because um, you just created this exception. It was, you know, prior, it was illegal. Do you guys have any response to that? Any explanation? No? So, you see, now this is the big problem with having your committees closed. You guys don't have to answer me. And it's so clear that you're making it completely legal for business to bribe you, <laughs> to rule in their favor. Which is so funny because you won't allow um, the public to comment so you can rule in their favor, but you're actually creating an ordinance to allow businesses to pay you off. So it would be really nice if you guys could explain this if I misunderstood this because this seems to be a pretty egregious decision. So does anyone? I've seen you guys respond to other commenters, Your so time. I know it's not against the yeah. rules. Your time is up. Sure. Do you guys have any explanation? Did no, I misunderstand I, this? Time or? is up. Okay, so that's Sam just Bellamio. by your omission. I'm I'm assuming that that's correct interpretation. So I hope people just think about that. Yeah, my name is Sam Bellamio. I'm here with Stand Up America, and um, I would like to speak about actually each item individually, uh, 8, 9, 10, and 11, because you're having a public hearing, and I believe the law says I'm allowed to speak to them individually. So after my comment that I speak about number 8, I'd like to speak again about number 9 and have my right to have a public hearing and give my voice on this agenda item. So specifically, number 8, I'm going to speak about how Mia's right. King County has now made something that was illegal legal. You're going to allow people that are elected officials or their employees off King County at work hours and outside King County. So, so they're going to solicit for King County and their officials in the department, but they're not on the clock. And they can't use King County resources, but why are they doing it off the clock and not being paid for it? So now they're out there soliciting contributions. It, I don't think that's ethical. Like, what, why are they... It specifically says that they can't be on the clock. Why are you allowing employees that are off the clock to solicit for funds for King County if they're off the clock? This, this 
this doesn't make any sense. But yeah, I can't bring this up. I have to bring it up just before you're about to vote on it. And I, I don't understand why I can't have, yes, uh, thank you, because I, I don't know why we can't have your committees open. This is a very egregious thing. I don't think Seattle makes it illegal. Why don't you make, keep it illegal? This is something that we should be stopping. I don't, you don't approve this. It shouldn't be on the consent item. This should be up for more debate. You should have it in your committee and have a public hearing in your committee. Why is this so hard to understand? Why? I love that you shake your head yes, Julie Barrison. I want you to do this. I know you understand because I met with you before. And you, and I, but you don't do anything. So you're the biggest problem. You understand you don't do anything. So I want you, to, everyone, to do something. To stand up. Open your committees. Change something small. You can do it. I know you can. We put you in this position to do exactly that. Work on behalf of the citizens. Stop on ethical uh, treatment of the citizens. On ethical not to have your committees open, but also on ethical to, or, to say that King County employees can now solicit for funds off work hours. It makes no sense. Can you please You're open your committees and start working on behalf of the citizens? Thank you, Sam. Yeah. Alex Zimmerman. On the job, Frank. Hi, my name is Alex Zimmerman and I represent Stand Up America. The question right now is very simple. We have Ethica right now? No. Yeah. Ethical committee? No. We complain to Ethical committee like a dozen times. Is this an ethical? When Don Constantine, a manager for four years, don't have one Q&A? Is this ethical when no one committee in King Country Council Chamber open to the public? What does mean more ethical? I'm totally confused, guys. You know what this mean? I think this is exactly what is supposed to be doing this ethical committee. We complain about this for a dozen times. We ask a com ethical committee a very simple question. Is this ethical? Why can country council can do in something what is nobody doing in King Country? Probably never doing in state Washington. Why don't Constantina manager never have a Q&A for four years and right now try to be elected another time? And same happened with King Country Council. Guys, this is totally uh, not understandable, you know what I mean? Uh, we don't have ethical rules, we don't have rules, we don't have law right now. You are above everything right now. We concentrate power in your hand. Is this very good for your business? For $135,000, you never work in half time. 180 day per year, you never work in. So you operate exactly what as we told you before, without ethical, without law, without everything. We have a pure of dictator right now. A bunch of crooks, nine crooks who control everything right now. In King Country for last two years, it's go for four years, you never once stop and it's a problem. You know what this means? So this is exactly what is we need changes. We need to come back to normal word. What is mean word ethical? You know what this means? When you were put your finger in something very bad, dirty place, it's not exactly ethical. But you're doing this every day and you will be very happy because this place is very dirty and very warm. Thank you very much. All right. Time is up. Thank you. Can I speak? Thank now? you. No, you can no. You can uh, sit down, or you can leave the, no. You, you all know the rules. Yeah, they're supposed to be individually spoken to, yeah, each hearing. That's actually the yeah. It's an RCW. Yes. Yeah. That's it. So no? So no. No. You know what this means for Asia? Above the Washington uh, State You know what this means uh, for that you, They can't you talk about it. Okay. okay. Yeah. What? So Mr. Yeah. Chair, I want to just clarify your earlier um, statement that the verbal outbursts should not be right. permitted. <laughs> All right. Um, are there others in the audience that would like to Anderson. comment? I think Councilmember Lambert was before me. Oh, go ahead, you can do it first. Go ahead. I just want to make something very uh, clear with staff. Um, I'm going to ask Mr. Melroy again this question. Here's a scenario, Mr. Melroy. The thing that um, I need to know that I'm perfectly clear on. If we had an issue that was before us, say it was a land use issue, where we would be making a decision that potentially could increase a landowner's property values significantly or decrease them significantly. It's my understanding that in the city of Seattle's law that is similar, it would be, an, it would not be um, lawful for me to call up that landowner and ask them for a contribution prior to that vote, just prior to that vote. 
Um, in, is there anything in this proposal that would prevent me from calling that landowner, say, one day or one hour prior to that vote and asking them for a contribution to this fund? The short answer to your question, uh, council member, is no. Uh, by way of example, I would cite that uh, Mayor Greg Nichols did have an office fund um, in adherence to the city uh, regulations, and uh, he did, uh, he was found to have violated the ethics code in receiving um, contributions from uh, Vulcan, and he, uh, that issue worked its way through their process, and I believe he uh, did have to return those funds and <coughs> pay a penalty. Um, so, so, uh, so, yes, it is. It is different from the from the city's situation in that regard. The answer to your question is no. And when I, I don't know, Mr. Chair, if Mr. Brewer has more to add to that. If I may, just for the for the record, Jim Brewer, Legal Counsel. The only point I wanted to follow up on was your your hypothetical involved a land use decision. If you were sitting in a quasi judicial capacity considering a land use matter independent of this ordinance. You are subject to the appearance of fairness doctrine as established in state law, yeah. and so there would be limitations, not for many of your legislative actions, but for the limited, for example, if you were determining on a subdivision application, an appeal from yes. the hearing examiner, oh, there's a different body of law. I here. understand that, but it doesn't cover, it does, certainly doesn't cover everything. Uh, Council Member uh, Lambert. Thank you. Um, I am concerned about what Council Member uh, Patterson was just saying. Um, I don't feel comfortable with even the impression or anything that people might think that um, that we could accept some kind of contribution when they had an issue before us. Under our current ethics ethics guidelines, we have to fill out every year if we have received any enumerations from anybody um, that had business with us during that prior year. Isn't that correct? That's correct. So we are already making it clear to the public um, who's doing business with us that we might have outside um, contacts with. So it seems to me that um, we could write an amendment that would say um, something very similar to the City of Seattle that um, anything that you would have to disclose on your yearly ethics form, um, anybody that you have to disclose on your yearly ethics form, you may not receive contributions from them within the next calendar year. That's clean and neat, and it, it deals with what Council Member Patterson was saying um, a couple minutes ago. Um, Council Member Lambert, would you yield to a question? I would be happy to. So are you suggesting that they can't do it to this fund, but then they can contribute to your campaign fund? Because you can't restrict their campaign fund, so the yeah. same entity could contribute to your campaign fund if you're restricting them from giving money to this office fund. So I'm confused about what, what, okay, what so, you're trying to accomplish. Um, first first off, um, you're out of order. On my campaign fund account, I would I would have the option of receiving, of, of depositing it or not, and maybe sending it back and saying, I don't feel comfortable at this sure. time. Um, so um, that would be one thing. It also is very clear um, to the public, it's up online 24-7, um, that I did receive a contribution from X, where the ethics board will not be online, so it'd be more difficult for somebody to see that. Um, and to me, it just seems, um, when somebody contributes to your campaign, they. They expect it to go into yard signs and brochures and those kinds of things. And then at the end, it flips over into another account that's equally as transparent in the surplus funds online where everybody can see. This isn't going to be online where everybody can see. So I have, I have concerns about it. You know, I, I think if you have those concerns, I think you should vote against the legislation. But basically, I, I see the transparency here because, the, again, this is not my legislation. It went through our committee. It was introduced by... Um, uh, one of our colleagues at the request of the county executive. 
um, I would only suggest to you that this is transparent and the Board of Ethics is going to be having that same information online or available to people who want to contact them, just as the Public Disclosure Commission makes it. Secondly, I don't know the difference between money that's contributed to your campaign fund, which in the con discussion of Council Member Patterson transferred over to your surplus fund, which is then paying for expenditures that you're not reimbursed for. And so I think the the, the transparency is there, the process is there, it's a different product in the sense of how it's done. But if I think if you feel this difficult, I think you should vote against legislation and we should proceed. So I just Kathy, are you uh, finished? So, um, so uh, but it, um, say anything about it being online, that we direct the Board of Ethics to put it online? Those mechanics weren't really considered in this legislation, the actual details of how it would be reported by the King County Board of Ethics. Okay, well maybe we can do that with a follow-up letter asking them yeah. to, to put it online. To, and I would be happy to share that letter and ask that they make that available online uh, on the Board of Ethics. have no problem listing both the contribution and the expenditures. It just seems to me there's so many different aspects to this that may need to go back to committee, but that's my opinion. Okay. All right. Um, this allows us um, to raise outside funds for an office fund that is disclosed when we receive the money and disclosed when we expend the money, limited to an average of $250 a year per contribution. And much like um, um, contributions that we receive as campaign contributions, we can receive those at any time throughout the year um, when we might make the request. The campaign contributions, which I'll point out have higher limits, have no limit on when we can solicit or request those. However, those too are fully disclosed, and I know that every one of us makes decisions about who it is appropriate to solicit from and who it is not appropriate, and when it is not appropriate to solicit from people who might have business before the council um, in making the campaign um, fundraising happen that we do. And I trust that every one of my colleagues will exercise the same excellent judgment in fundraising for a office fund as well. And I would point out even with a much lower limit involved here. And so I would ask um, my colleagues to support this legislation. All right, uh, Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Thank you, Mr. Chair. No, you're out of pocket. Please, no, I was out of the roll, Ann. Go ahead. Council Member Dembowski. Aye. Council Member Dunn. You can pay for your Aye. legislation to be passed. Council Member Haig, Council Member Lambert. It's incredibly corrupt. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. And that Thank issue you. was never addressed. Council Member McDermott. Aye. Council Member Patterson. No. Council Member Phillips. Aye. Council Member Von Reichpower. Aye. Mr. Chair. Aye. Mr. Chair, the vote is um, five ayes, three noes. Those voting no are Council Members Dunn, Lambert, and Patterson, and Council Member Haig is excused. Thank you. Having received the required uh, votes, proposed substitute, substitute ordinance 2012-0090 is adopted. Can you ask as long as we know about it? Okay, you're... You can do We're going... To, yeah. 